It's a little known fact that Predator learned how to shoot during an afternoon spent in a hide with Crow Man. And he obviously didn't know he was there, as Mr Predator had spent the previous week studying how Mr Crow builds a hide. And let's just say he's pimped his spacecraft in Jack Pike English Oak. Anyway, our real-life pigeon predator is out again and he's setting up shop on another abandoned crop that's worth keeping an eye on at this time of year. You see, I've been picking up some barley. We've got whole ears. And with barley, it takes a lot longer to germinate. It's, uh, this barley's been cut now since uh, the first week of July this has been cut. And we've had rain, we've had hot weather, and it's just not germinated. So that's why the pigeons are here. And winter barley stubbles or, or spring barley stubbles, keep an eye on them because they tend to, to leave them. That's what they've done here. They've left this stubble and gone off onto the drilling and, and other stuff. But then they, because they prefer other stuff to the barley because you've got the whiskers on the barley, they don't like that so much. Now they've got wet, they've all gone brittle and it's, it's, they're not spiky. They get stuck in their throats, they don't like all that. So they, they come back on this as a last resort. You've got one that's germinated there and then the others, are, they haven't germinated. So of course the pigeons are just, they just clear that up. So a few weeks ago it was beans. Now barley can be added to the list of possible food sources. From food sources to heat sources. We're using the guide IR510 from Thomas Jacks. The ability to film through it offers all sorts of interesting results. The quality is good enough to show a flock of ferals on the other side of the field, and feathers flying off birds as Andy makes contact. What is particular fun is seeing the wad, not the shot, offering a heat signature. Ruby Ruby looks particularly vivid. If she wasn't here, the guide could of course help locate the birds tucked away in a crop. Back to normal vision and Andy has kept the hide away from the field margin. It's less cover but it means he can shoot behind him. Tucked underneath a lot of birds would be lost in the foliage. Now it's fair to say that Andy thought it was going to be a bonanza day. He's packed plenty of clear pigeon cartridges but uncharacteristically for Crow it's not as busy as he'd expect. There's a lot of birds here yesterday and don't know where they've gone to die. They certainly ain't here. That's what we end up with 50. Which would be quite nice. I'm happy with it. A few tame ones here at the moment. They get on it again in the end. I just love to know where they've gone to die. Certainly not coming now. They get nil bonds. It's just nice to be out with you, David. Really enjoy that. As Andy says, it's worth trying to move the birds on a few days before you plan to shoot it just to gauge how much they want it. If they come back to the field within half an hour, chances are they're locked on. Andy plays with the pattern. He's got the larger than life A1 decoys out today as well as their whirlies. The thermal shows they're working hard. The thermal also shows up the fresh birds as opposed to the weak old ones that Andy's used for the pattern. As well as some good pigeons, there's a token crow, plus a fox heading away from the local pheasant shoot a mile away. And it's the pheasant shooting that might have kept the pigeons from homing in here. We started at 11.30am and every bird's crop is empty apart from one of the last birds Andy shoots at 3pm. Well, this one last one I just shot. He's got bitch nuts in his crop. I'll see a few pigeons early on over the back over there on... In the wood there's a few beech trees in there and that's what he's been on. They go on that over preference over anything else because it's got so much protein in it. It's the first one we shot today with anything in it. Maybe we should get Andy to produce a league table of the wood pigeon's most favourite grub. Unbelievable, isn't it? As we prepare to pack up, Andy uses the thermal to locate a missing woody, but Ruby gets there first. It adds to a bag of 50 birds. Pretty good as barley was off the menu, but they'll be back.